Hey girl, hey, welcome back to the Your Pretty Pennies YouTube channel. I'm Tara Jones, financial success coach and lifestyle designer. And here on this channel, we are manifesting our best lives in the areas of faith, family finance, family finances, and femininity. If that sounds like something that you're into and this is your first time joining us, welcome. And make sure you hit the like button if you like this video and also subscribe. To those of you who are returning and already are in the YPP community, hey girl, hey, welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about five different daily habits that you can do in order to cultivate your femininity. Now, before we, I get into the tips, I kind of want to talk about my views on femininity and why I think it's important for us to stop running away from our feminine essence and get back to it and actually cultivate it. Um, so... As you may or may not know, yes, I'm in finance. Yes, I'm a financial success coach. I have a background in that and even experience in paying off massive amounts of debt, including student loans. Um, so you can watch some other financial videos, but I'm getting more into what it takes to manifest the lifestyle you desire. And one of those things for us women is to cultivate and use the mo the best energy that we have and the most of it that we have, which is feminine energy. So for, and for females, natural females, we have more feminine energy than masculine energy, right? And so feminine energy is that energy that we use to beautify things, to nurture, to love, to support, right? To cater, to calm, to inspire, to encourage, to create our biggest way of you creating is through our feminine energy right we have a body that literally can create and incubate and birth life we are the best creators out of both genders right and masculine energy is protecting leading providing right proving com com uh com uh what do you call it competing all those different masculine energies and we do have masculine energy inside of us but we have more feminine energy and then we have masculine energy so as women if you want to manifest your life better and faster you really have to tap into your power of feminine energy and you know in this day and age in the area of a in the age of a feminist society it can be tough like you can be shamed or even feel guilty for being a girly girl or being too feminine or being too soft or being too mild mannered or gentle in this rough world but I'm here to say what would life look like and what would this world look like if all the women in the world are denying and pushing away and trying to suppress their feminine energy where we are called to create from to beautify to nurture to support to love from what would the world look like if we, everybody, male and female, are operating in their masculine energy? Or what would the world look like, which is kind of going this way right now, where men are starting to operate more in their feminine energy because they do have feminine energy, but they have more masculine and feminine. Again, my whole goal for today in this video is for you to understand that as a woman, as a, a woman who desires to be more feminine, who desires to manifest the lifestyle she desires, and you enjoy being pretty and beautiful, here are five tips in order to do that better and easier. All right? If you are not into this type of thing, if you are the type of woman and you call yourself a feminist, and or if you feel like uh, this is crazy, uh, you don't believe in this, this is weird, uh, if this is too vain for you to be worried about your beauty and your lifestyle and all these other things, this is not for you. Might as well click off right now. Let's talk about the five tips to cultivate your inner, your, your femininity and your feminine energy. The first thing is to beautify yourself. And so what this means is try to always look pretty. Again, this is not about putting on airs. This is not about trying to be more than what you are. This is literally taking more time for yourself. So when I mean to beautify yourself, I mean take more time. Give your extra, yourself extra time in the morning. It's funny how we as women can make it to work, can make it to our kids' school, to football games, basketball games, and all these other things for our children, for everybody else in the world, for our jobs, for if we're running errands for somebody else, if we have to meet up with someone. But yet we give ourselves the, the, our, the least amount of time, the least amount of energy, the least amount of effort. And that has to be reversed. 
Like you want to give yourself, create your day to where you give yourself enough time to get ready to where it looks like you made an effort in your hair, in your makeup, in your skincare, in your clothes, right? In your, um, your, um, hair and nails, your toes, everything weekly make sure on a weekly or bi-weekly or a monthly basis you're getting a pedicure you're getting your nails done you're getting your toes done right now they have press on nails to where you don't even have to break the bank if it's not in your budget to get your nails done every few weeks you can paint your nails on your own or you can get the like press on nails like sally hansen and all those other brands that do press on nails from like back in the day they created nails and the nail glue to where it lasts just as long as you getting your nails done every couple of weeks like, it's crazy. And so you can go on YouTube and Google how to put on press-on nails. And these women are killing it in their little in-home beauty, little uh, table, and their little vanity setup, putting on their nails. And it looks like they have on nails that they just came fresh from the nail salon with, all right? So make sure that you are taking time for yourself to beautify yourself, to put the time and energy and effort that it requires for you to look your best every day. That should be your number one goal is to look better than you did the day before or the week before always look good on a daily basis this is a non-negotiable right you have to get to your you have to get to a point where me looking good me looking beautiful me looking my best is a non-negotiable right and so that doesn't mean you got to have a face full of makeup you got to have every wig that's on the shelf or you got to have you got to flat iron your hair every day whatever that looks like where you're natural whether you wear wigs or weaves whether you wear your hair straight it does not matter we all comes in we all come in different shapes and sizes that's what i love about being a woman and we also can reinvent ourselves like right now i'm wearing a wig last month I had my fro out if you're not familiar with my fro I have this gorgeous natural hair that I cut um I did a big chop a little over two years ago or sorry a little less than two years ago and my hair has grown and I love wearing my hair out but I switch it up like sometimes I'll wear a wig sometimes I'll wear sew-in sometimes I'll wear my fro out sometimes I'll wear my hair straightened like I love to reinvent myself because it keeps people guessing, keeps me fresh, keeps people not feeling comfortable and getting too comfortable and thinking that they know me or they know what I'm going to do. And then also going back to that feminine energy and cultivating that feminine energy, we are creators. So us doing a new makeup look, that's creating something new that hasn't been done before. Us, you know, reinventing ourselves, making a new outfit in our closet with different pieces and mix, mix and matching our outfits and redoing outfits with, with pieces we already have and shoes we already have that's creating right that's part of our creative energy and it feels so good it keeps you in a good place it keeps you happy it keeps you looking young feeling young um it's just a great spot to be in so tip number one beautify yourself cultivate that feminine energy by beautifying yourself getting creative creative with your makeup creative with your look your earrings your accessories your hair your nails um finding new ways and to just you know liven it up a little bit shake things up a little bit on a month-to-month -month basis right that's gonna take us right into tip number two beautify or elevate your surroundings looking good is feeling good being in a feeling in a, a cute environment a pretty environment a calm decluttered clean environment is going to help you feel better not only for your mental health but your physical health and your spiritual health right it all works together and so always make sure you do little things to where you just enjoy being where you are whether it's in your car whether it's in your home your home office or your sacred space whether you are um you know in your bedroom if you are a working woman and you have an office or a cubicle bring some candles in there bring some color in there Put up a background, you know, put up some wallpaper that's cute, that's florally. You know, this is actually a little faux rug that I got from Target and I drape it over the back of my chair. See, this is like my office chair, which matches with the wall and it's cute. But if you just drape this over a little bit, look, like it's just so cute to look at. Like I just love looking at it, right? And so just do little things that just makes you happy to be in the place that you're in, happy to be and to create in your own world, right? 
we are called to be the little G-O-Ds of our world, the little gods of our world. And so you get to create the lifestyle you desire. Make it look like it, right? Look like it. Look at my cute little lamp and my little saying and my candles. Like, I love my little pen these little things just make me happy like it's the littlest things you can get these things from the dollar store you can get them from Mar uh, from michael's 40 percent off 50 percent off whatever it is like decorating your home each season like switching things up with the season i decorate at least or redecorate at least three months out of the year every three months out of the year so for spring i got a different tablescape my living room looks different my pillows are different for the fall is different for the winter is different for the spring and the summer is different right i'm switching things up it's something new something fresh i'm using my creative energy my feminine energy to create a different ambiance a different atmosphere in my home different color palettes different schemes sometimes i'll do vintage glam and i'll go thrifting and find a bunch of stuff and i'll pair it with modern glam pieces sometimes i might like for for christmas this year i want to do a farmhouse chic glam look to where it's going to be some farmhouse christmas pieces but it's also going to be like glammed up and then i'm gonna put a little vintage in there because i love vintage stuff so just play with it you see how my face is going just talking about this stuff this stuff is going to help you create your feminine energy and so you can start creating and manifesting from a place of peace from happiness from joy from you know from all the different things that makes us women like we are not supposed to be always hustling and grinding and focus on the next thing and trust me if you are a single mother I've been a single mother for the past 10 years. I'm engaged now, but for the past 10 years, I've been doing it on my own with my daughter, you know, trying to make ends meet. I get it, building a business. I was working in corporate America where I barely got to see her. And in these videos, I'm gonna start telling you how to get out of that mindset and start executing everything that you desire and attracting and receiving everything you desire from a place of peace from a place of feminine energy from gentleness from softness from what i call a graceful hustle because we were called to be the beauties of the earth we are not called to be bogged down to be stressed out to be hustling and grinding and hard and tough and masculine we just not. We have that energy in us because we do have to raise children. We do have to put our foot down. We can secure deals and secure the bag. Not saying that we can't. But you can operate in your feminine energy in most of the day and still get everything you need to get done. Right? That leads me to step number three. Um, well, actually, step number three is get rest. That will lead me to step number four. Let's go on to step number three. Step number three is to get rest and sleep now there's two different things that i like to call there's a difference for me between resting and sleeping so this is something that i do not hear a lot of women talk about and i am a stickler for and i used to be called lazy or i used to think it was lazy to rest in the middle of the day but if you study other cultures and women who are culturally feminine right because femininity is not just always natural or innate a large part of it is learned behavior feminine being a feminine being um, a feminine woman and having mannerisms and habits of a feminine woman is highly learned behavior so typically women who are raised by feminine women tend to be more feminine it's not necessarily that you don't have enough feminine energy in you that's why you're so hard and masculine no you just haven't been told and taught how to cultivate that within yourself it's in you you just gotta cultivate it right you just gotta step into it you gotta nurture it you gotta encourage it you gotta wake it up inside of you and so that's what this video is for so step number three is rest and sleep if you study other cultures where they have a lot of feminine essence if they uh, really um, encourage femininity for women, you will notice that not only do they not work a ton of hours a day. So for me, my max right now is five hours a day, four days a week. I do not work more than that. Even if I can, even if I have the ability to, I do not work more than that just because it will throw me out of balance. But not only do they not work long hours like men do, but number two, they rest midday. 
whether they're working or whether they're at home, they rest midday. And so I encourage you, whether you are at work and it's your lunch hour, to eat and then rest. And by rest, I mean go somewhere where there's nobody else around. It's just you by yourself, whether that's your car, whether that's a different conference room, whether you could go downstairs to a cafeteria where nobody is or a break room that's low key, whatever that looks like. Or if you're in the home and you're working from home as an entrepreneur or a stay at home mom, going like just stopping put everything down walk away from your home office walk away from doing chores or laundry or whatever it is that you're doing midday and just rest for at least 30 minutes I don't care if that's just scrolling on Facebook or just laying there with your eyes closed and taking a nap just rest and then at night give yourself a bedtime give yourself a bedtime of like 10 o'clock for me regardless if i'm tired or not 10 o'clock everything shuts off and i gotta go to bed right i might talk to my fiance on the phone a little bit around that time but i'm in bed the lights are off the house is shut down i'm not cleaning i'm not working i'm not making outfits for tomorrow i'm not making lunches i'm not doing anything i'm resting right and i'm preparing for bed your rest and your sleep is so important to your to cultivating your feminine because you were called to be beautiful and to rest and to be um a gentle spirit of this world right again you have some masculine tendencies and we need that from time to time but you need to cultivate that femininity and part of that is being restful and youthful all right and so you need your rest to get them bags from under your eyes you need to rest so you have the energy to get up and put time into yourself into your kids into your household into your spouse into your dating life into manifesting your desires if you are tired, how are you going to manifest? If you are tired, how are you going to manage your money, right? If you are operating from a place of just, you know, just tiredness and fatigue all the time, that is does not make for a good life, right? And so oftentimes we'll focus on leveling up in our finances and leveling up in all these other areas. And it's like, sis, you just need to go to sleep. You just need to rest. You need to put some of them things that you done picked up that God did not even call you to do. You just keep saying yes to everybody and overloading your plate. Put some of them things down and rest. Trust and believe me, nobody is going to come rescue you and say, hey, sis, you're doing too much. If your body is telling you you're overwhelmed, put that down. Put it down. Put it down. Ask for help. Receive help. Put some things down and really Put some more time and energy back into you because the better the, and the better you look and feel, the better others around you will look and feel because you will make them feel better and you encourage them to feel better about themselves. So it all starts with you. So if you don't start pouring into yourself and carving out time for your rest and your sleep and your beauty and creating the environment that you thrive in, you are constantly going to be manifesting from a low place and it's going to stop you from manifesting quickly or manifesting the lifestyle you desire. All right. Step number four is cut out the amount of time you talk a day in half. Again, I'm not telling you to shut up because sometimes femininity gets a bad rap where people think just because you're a feminine woman, you can't talk, you can't speak, you got to be quiet, you can't speak unless spoken to, a man is going to control you. There's so many things I hear and that's not it. But when I say this, a wise woman who I just adore, who is a powerful woman, she has a powerful career, but she is a feminine woman through and through, right? She told me to stop being masculine and i'm gonna give you the list of the following areas when it comes to talking and listen start listening more and start stop being stop doing and start being and when she says stop doing these are the things she told me to stop doing all the time stop venting stop gossiping stop complaining stop bossing people around stop problem solving for other people stop proving stop providing and stop explaining those are all things that we do in our masculine energy, right? And it's necessary at times when it's appropriate. But if we are doing that 90% of the day, we are, it's no wonder why we are so drained as women to where we don't have time to or energy to work on ourselves, to eat right, to, to look better, to level up, to do all these other things. 
We don't have the energy to because it takes so much energy out of us just to do all these things. Instead, what we need to be doing is listening. We just need to be. And by being, you're being in your feminine energy, which is the most energy you have. And it's the easiest energy to work with, which means you exert less energy by getting what you need done by listening, consoling, helping, calming, receiving, nurturing, right? These are all traits that you can do in your feminine energy that you can do throughout the day for the most part, right? Right now I'm coaching, I'm explaining, I'm bossing you around, I'm problem solving you right now. I don't do this all day every day. When I coach, when I get on my coaching calls, I do two hours a day for three days a week. I only have my schedule, my coaching schedule open for two hours a day, three days a week, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Monday, I do not coach. Friday, I do not coach. Saturday, I do not coach. And Sunday, I do not coach, right? And when I'm out of this masculine role, which building a business and coaching and doing all those other things, there's nothing wrong with leading in that. And there's nothing wrong with using your masculine energy in that. But if I start operating my home from that energy, if I start managing my relationship with my fiance, I will not be engaged right now. Because let me tell you, sis, a man is not with you for you to problem solve for him, for you to explain to him what he needs to do, for you need to boss, for you to boss him around, for you to prove your worth to him. You are already dope. You are already it. You are already beautiful. You are already complete. You are already what he desires. You do not need to prove that. You do not need to go above and beyond to prove to somebody why they should marry you, why they should listen to you. Even in your workplace, if somebody can't see your light, that's on them. You don't have to prove yourself. You do not have to go out your way to anybody to prove to them what you're trying to prove. You just be it. You just show up beautiful. You show up intelligent. You show up smart. You show up spiritual, intellectual, tapped in, tuned in, turned on. And if they see it, they see it. If they don't, they don't. You don't have to prove a thing. You don't have to explain yourself. If you start leveling up and you didn't wear makeup yesterday and today you start wearing makeup and people are like, why are you wearing makeup? Because I want to. Isn't it beautiful? Because I, have, I gave myself extra time today. Isn't it amazing? You don't have to explain yourself on what you've seen, who you see and why why are you going to cultivate your femininity and start explaining feminine and masculine energy and getting into these arguments no you just show up you just be you stop doing and you start being right when a man has an issue for example my fiance we kind of talked about what I can and what I can't say but he knows that my life I'm called to coach and inspire and educate women and so he knows he's going to be used as examples and he doesn't care. He doesn't mind. He's a good sport. Um, but when I'm, when I'm interacting with him, if he is irritated about something right now, he's a single father, right? He, uh, two kids. I don't come to his rescue. I'm not his rescue. I'm here to help him once we're married. We're engaged. We're not married yet. So we didn't have to create that covenant. So even now, I don't quote unquote help him. But if we're married, I'm called to help him. I'm not called to problem solve for him. I'm not called to build for him. So if, for example, in our marriage, we already talked about this. If something is not, if a bill is not being paid based on his income, I'm not called to go out and get eight jobs just to make sure ends meet. No, I'm here to support and encourage him that he can do it and he can solve this problem for our family. If if something happens in his leadership to where he's not leading effectively, I'm not called to, set, to stand up and lead and be like, oh, I'll take the reins. No, I'm called to encourage and to calmly and to encourage him and to lift him up to being the man who he's supposed to be, not trying to be the man for him, right? totally different if he has an issue at work i'm called to encourage him and to say you know things will get better it's okay i'm not called to problem solve and to give advice and to coach him through something that's not my role right that's not my role i'm called to women typically women are never called to coach men right men don't even it's in their dna it's not even like getting advice from women right my 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 fiance says it all the time like even if women are right if a woman tells us something even if they're right we're going to reject it because no man likes to be taught by a woman because it's natural for a man to be the leader right to be the one who's um 
providing and protecting and leading and cultivating the woman. I'm not cultivating a man. That it, That's too much energy, too much time. The only man I'm cultivating is my sons, period. Right? And so as a woman, as a spouse, whether it's right now, your spouse right now, or engaged or go, planning to be one, get out of that habit. If a man comes to you with his issues, it's not because he wants you to solve them. It's just because he wants some of your feminine energy to ooze over him and say, babe, it's okay. It's going to be all right. You know you could have handled that better. You know, just encourage him and lift him up to be who he has to be. Don't try to step into his role. All right. Step number five, restore your feminine mystery. Ladies, uh, this, this woman who I'm talking about, who's my mentor, taught me this too. Stop telling everybody everything, including your spouse, including your family, including your friends, including the guy that's courting you, including the social media. Stop revealing everything. And by revealing, I mean stop revealing every curve on your body on social media. I mean stop revealing every move that you're making in your business. Stop revealing every move that you make, your, the breakdown of your day. Like, have some mystery to you. That's part of being feminine and being a woman is to move about this earth on your own terms, doing what you want to do, cultivating your energy, don't tell the guy that you're dating or the guy that you're with, your husband, your spouse, whoever, everything. This is not does not mean keep secrets. This just means when you're moving in your feminine essence, you don't have to tell him that you bought a new lipstick and you're wearing it. Surprise him, right? That's going to keep, or if you at work and one day you wearing lipstick, one day you not, all of a sudden, they, one day you wasn't, wasn't wearing makeup, all of a sudden you are, that's going to keep people on their toes. And then you're constantly leveling up in your mindset, in your makeup, in your hair, in your clothes, in your lifestyle. People are going to be like, I can't get a grasp on her. I'm intrigued by her right and this keeps you from being too common right too predictable you want to be that woman where people are like when you walk into the room or if you walk into church or if you walk into your office they like i wonder what she's wearing today last week her outfit was on fire her makeup looks were really cute your husband is going to be like man i wonder what she's going to wear today i wonder what wig she going to have on how she's wearing her hair this month how the house is going to be decorated this month even the kids i wonder my Taryn always is Taryn always is surprised how I look when I get home or if I show up to her school, how things are decorated when she gets home. It's always something new. It, it lets her into my world, my daughter, even my fiance when he comes over. If it's a new tablescape, if I have a new dish that I'm cooking that I let him try or whatever the case is, new outfit, new boots, new shoes. We're going to get into how to look cute on a budget because you can switch things up and consistently reinvent your outfit, your wardrobe, your hair, your makeup, your nails, and don't got to spend a lot of money. Trust me, I'm super thrifty, super frugal, so we're going to talk about that in a later video. So don't think I'm telling you to spend hundreds of thousands of dollars on external stuff because I'm not, right? And if you watch some of my videos, you'll get that about me. But anyway... It gives them a chance to be in my world, to step into my world and be like, man, I haven't experienced this, right? Because I'm a creator. As women, we are called to create. We create our little worlds and we invite our families and our friends and our coworkers and anybody that we interact with into our world. My car has its own atmosphere. My house has its own atmosphere, right? My bedroom outside of my house, outside of like just my main living areas has its own atmosphere. And I love doing that. It just cultivates my essence, my energy, my femininity. Like people are attracted to me. In my business, I have, like, with my coaching clients, like, they love the experience that they get with me that they can't get from anywhere else. Like, I just love everything about it, all right? And so those are my five tips for you. Number one, cultivate your beauty. Number two, cultivate your, your area, your living areas, your home, your car, your bedroom, right? Cult number three, get rest and get sleep. Remember, those two are two different things. Rest midday, sleep at night. Number four, stop doing and start being, aka stop talking and stop proving and stop exerting all your masculine energy all day and get into your feminine energy and operate from there. And, step and tip number five is to restore your feminine mystery.
right? Give people something to look forward to. Don't give everything all at once. Don't show every curve on your body. On social media, let them see you in person and be like, dang, I know you had all that. Trust me, that's how my fiance was. He ain't know I had hips, but a feminine womanly figure if I was straight up and down or whatever. He ain't know what he was getting. And when we went on our first day, he was like, yo, she's cute, right? She got a nice body. So, not everybody on social media know what type of body I have, all right? So thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you learned something from it. I'm so silly. I'm so funny. Part of being a feminine woman, right? Um, make sure you hit that comment section and let me know what tips or what things you are going to start cultivating within the next month or two. Always have something that you're working on. So what tip are you going to start working on today, starting today? Let me know in the comments. Make sure you like, subscribe, and share this video with someone. And I'll talk to you in my next video. Take care. Bye.